They're just big blobs. Like, look at them. Literally a small child. <laughs> they are taking over my desk. Oh my gosh, she's licking me. Hi friends, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Jenna. I love to crochet plushies. And if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. For today's video, we will be making my largest order to date. Hi! I'm so excited, you guys. So basically, this seaweed snack company reached out to me. They are called Gimme Seaweed. And the crazy thing is, I have seen this brand in stores when, you know, shopping for food. And I knew exactly who they were. I personally love eating seaweed as a snack. I know what you're thinking. At first, you're like, wait, that sounds gross, but it actually isn't. They're like a very light, savory snack, so highly recommend you guys try it out if you haven't tried the seaweed snacks yet. But anyway, they reached out to me on Instagram, and they wanted me to make 23 turtles for them. Three human-sized and 20 regular. And at first, I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Like, I totally want to do it. But then reality kicked in, and my brain was like, Jenna, 23 turtles, that is a lot. And they also wanted to receive these turtles before Christmas. So at the time, I think it was like mid-November. So I'm like, oh, I don't know if I can meet that deadline, but I decided to take on the challenge and do it because why not, YOLO? So yeah, this video will highlight the process of me making all of these turtles and I can't wait to show you guys how they turn out at the end. And then I forgot to mention, Gimme Seaweed's logo includes a little sea turtle and that is ultimately why they wanted these turtles. They wanna include these turtles in their PR packages that they send out to like clients, celebrities, influencers. So I'm really excited to like have my products really get out there and go to some of their cool clients. But okay, enough talking on my end. Let's get into crocheting. Okay, so for this order, I had to go ahead and place a large order from Premier Yarns because I did not have enough yarn on hand, of course. So for this deal, they specifically wanted the regular turtles to be two different colors, mint and light blue. The mint turtles will have, you know, the mint body and then they'll have a hot pink shell and then the light blue turtles will do a light blue body and a emerald green shell. So I went ahead and ordered a bunch of skeins and then here's the hot pink and then I actually already had enough emerald so I didn't order more emerald but then for the human sized turtles they wanted basically the same colors mint green body hot pink shell so i ordered some parfait xl and then for the blue one they wanted oh here's the emerald and then for the light blue one they wanted light blue body and then emerald shell and actually here's some emerald yarn i did end up ordering it for parfait xl because i didn't have enough and yeah that is all of the yarn to give you guys some like pricing perspective the order was over a thousand dollars and all of this yarn cost me two hundred dollars so the material cost is definitely going to be up there because we have all the yarn and then we are going to be using a crap ton of stuffing and then shipping costs so the expenses for this project are pretty big but you know ultimately so are the profits so that just kind of goes hand in hand and then as you guys can see i already started making one human sized turtle so i have the head done and this is the light blue emerald combination and then i have some of the shell done and then i also wanted to show you guys i got done some of the heads ahead of time because i did have some of this yarn on hand so i did as much as i could i think i have like six heads here and then i also got done 10 turtle heads over here Hey guys, happy Tuesday. I came on because I wanted to show you the progress that I've made so far with the human-sized turtles that I'm making. I got all of the front fins done, so I have to make two of the light blue human-sized turtles. So these are the two front fins, and then I got the two back fins done, the two little tails, the two heads, and then I got done one of the shells. So now I just need to focus on finishing the body, sewing all of the fins and the tail into the body, stuffing it, and then we will be done one. Then I gotta repeat, make another big shell, and yeah, I'm hoping to get all of that done today. Maybe the next time I come on, I will be done. That would be really, really nice. And then after I get these two done, I need to make one more human-sized 
turtle. So we're gonna do a mint green body and then a hot pink shell. And then after that, I can finally move on and just focus on the regular size turtles. Using the thicker yarn definitely gets my hand more, you know, tired and sore versus using like just the regular size yarn and the regular size hook. Cause with these human size turtles, I use a nine millimeter, so it's pretty thick. It's like a pretty thick hook, honestly. So it definitely gets my hand sore. So I went ahead and actually bought some compression gloves on Amazon. I'll link them down below. I'll let you guys know how they feel. I see a lot of other crocheters use the compression gloves. So I was like, you know what? I guess I'll finally give it a try. So as you guys saw, I got done the one body. This is what she looks like. Beautiful, beautiful. I really do love this color combination. Hug check. <laughs> it is just so massive. So the only thing left is the head. And I just got done stuffing the head literally bigger than my head. But okay, I'm gonna sew on the head and then we are done the first turtle. Sewing on the head is such an ordeal. Like I literally get a workout sewing on this head because it takes, takes a lot of coordination and you really wanna make sure the head is straight. So yeah, a lot of focus, a lot of coordination. And then off camera, I did go ahead and make the second shell. So here we go. I do get a lot of comments actually about people asking how to make their turtle shells less cone shaped. And honestly, I get the cone shape too. But when you go to stuff the turtle, I find that that basically solves the issue. Because like, if you see my turtle shell here, it's kind of pointed, right? But then when I stuff my turtle, the point goes away. It is perfectly round. So I always advise people like, make sure to keep your attention pretty loose when you do those first few rounds of the shell, but do not get discouraged if you still see that point and like the cone shape, because most likely it will go away with stuffing. Same thing with the head. Sometimes the magic ring and the first few rounds of the head make it more pointy, but when you go and stuff it, you can really shape the head the way you would like and then it gets much more round so really try not to worry about it but it is always nice to keep your tension pretty loose in the first few rounds to avoid like some really really pointed um heads and shells okay i just got done the second turtle body here we go cute and like I showed you guys earlier, the point is basically gone. It is perfectly round and looking very much like a headless turtle. Let me grab the other one. Whoa, I've never simultaneously made two human-sized turtles. I've only ever made them one at a time. So this is kind of cool for me, holding both of them like this. Wow, okay, let's go ahead and finish the heads and put them all together. Literally, can we just take a moment and look at them on my desk, oh my goodness. Also the floor, so many fuzzies. The only bad thing about working with chenille yarn. Yay, got the second head stuffed and put the eyes and blush on. So we are now ready to sew on the heads. I keep stalling because I do not want to sew these heads on. It is like a whole ordeal to sew these heads on, guys. But I came on because I wanted to show you like how massive are these heads. And then like, look at me trying to hold both of them. Like what? They're just big blobs. Like look at them. They're huge. 
They look like giant blueberries or like the mochi ice cream. I am obsessed. I kind of want to just make one big turtle head and just leave it a turtle head. Like, don't make it into a turtle. Look at this. <laughs> I cannot. We're done! Look at this baby! Finished sewing the head on and here is the final product. Wow. Literally such a big boy. Hug check. Now I just need to do one more. As you guys saw in the video, it is literally a lot to sew on the head. This is a labor of love for sure. Guys, I finished the second turtle. It's right here in the corner if you didn't peep the little blue corner. But let me show you guys. Here is the second baby. So large. Okay, so hug check. He is perfect. And let me try and grab his brother because I, I don't know if I can get both of them. Okay. Oh my gosh, here we go. I feel like I just birthed twins. Like these are my children and I can barely handle both of them at one time. But look at this. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> you can barely see my head. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. Literally twins. I cannot, guys. Oh my gosh. Literally feel like a whole mother right now. <laughs> Good morning friends. I have not wasted any time and I got started on the next human sized turtle. Look at this color combination. I love it. Hot pink with mint green body and then I got all of the fins done and the tail and the head. So all that is left is to sew the fins into the body and then finish up the body and attach the head. I think we're making really good time because hopefully by the end of today, I will be done the human sized turtles for this order. And then I can really just focus on the 20 regular sized turtles. And the way I like to go about making something over and over again is I like to like isolate the different parts. So I will make all of the heads first. So I made all 20 heads. Then I'll make all of the fins. Then I will make all of the shells and then it'll be like one big conveyor belt and I will put everything together. That's how I like to look at it. I feel like that's the quickest way to like pump out something that is so like repetitive like this. And then it also helps me like zone out because I feel like if I do think about the numbers and like how I need to make literally 20 of these turtles, I would go crazy. So it's good to just like zone out about it. I'm just like, I call it like going into autopilot mode. My, my hands just go. Hey guys, I am gonna put on my labels on, well I guess they're technically tags. I'm gonna put the custom label that I got. I'm gonna put it on all three of the human sized turtles that are going out to give me seaweed. It's so funny when I flip the turtles on their back, it's just like, wow, they look like so exhausted, so over, so over everything. I also feel like I'm like performing surgery whenever I like sew on their heads and have to flip them onto their back. But yeah, I got the two other turtles here and we are gonna put the label on. I'm not sure about placement to be honest. I feel like maybe on the back fin, like right here. Or maybe like, like there. Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Okay, here is the final result. Oh my gosh, guys, I love it. It looks so good and it's really discreet, which I like. It's like very low key, but it honestly looks like really professional now having it tagged. So this baby is done. Let's go tag the other two. Okay, I officially finished all of the 10 turtle parts last night. As you can see, we have 10 heads. 
We have 40 fins all together, the two front and the two back, and then we have 10 tails. So now I need to make all of the shells and sew all of these bad boys together. Also, yes, I am wearing the compression gloves, and if you guys watched my previous vlog, I said I wasn't a fan of them, and I'm still not a fan of them. I'm literally wearing them for warmth because it is so cold out and my hands are so cold. <laughs> Okay, switching the camera so I can talk to you guys. So yes, I went ahead and finished all of the parts for my 10 light blue turtles last night and I actually did some calculations. I wanted to see how many fins I could get out of one skein. So let me open up my notes. I literally took notes on this and I don't think these metrics are like specifically helpful, but I just like wanted to document. So, okay, I got 14 of these little back fins out of one skein of yarn. So yeah, I was able to get 14 back fins. Altogether, I had to make 20 back fins. So that's pretty good for one skein. Oh no, my camera's dying, hold on. Okay, I'm back. So back to what I was saying. I also wanted to time myself. So with a turtle, there are four fins. You have the two front fins and the two back fins. So that means I had to make 10 of each. So I wanted to see how long it would take me to make 10 of the back fins. So it actually came out to four minutes per fin. So when I made 10 of them, I ended at 40 minutes even. So I thought that was pretty cool. I like kept a consistent pace and I feel like I went slightly faster because I knew I was being timed but yeah overall not bad so once I finish up these blue turtles I then need to repeat this whole process again I literally did the calculation so four fins per turtle and I'm doing 20 turtles that's 80 fins that I have to crochet 80 I try not to think about it though I feel like I definitely have zoned out and I've just gone in autopilot mode I've been binging a lot of TV and that is definitely helped because I feel like if I like sat back and was like okay I need to make 80 turtle fins I think I would go crazy like I couldn't do it I would get too much in my head so definitely recommend if you're like market prepping or making the same thing over and over again put on your favorite TV show zone out and just you know enjoy the process despite making the same thing over and over again i still am having fun and that's like the most important part i crochet because i love it i'm glad that this order hasn't like sucked the fun out of crocheting but okay i'm gonna take off these gloves and i'm gonna get back to crocheting Hey guys, I'm coming on because I finished all of the turtle shells for the emerald green turtles. Also, I have Shay right here. Hi, baby. Hi. She's chilling with me. Oh my gosh, she's licking me. Baby never shows me any affection. Oh, she stopped, but okay. So, I have all 10 of these shells done. It was... A labor of love for sure but I basically did it all the way up to the step where you have to start sewing the fins so I'm going to now sew all of the fins and then we can wrap up the green and blue turtles and then I've also been working on the mint green turtles so I'm halfway done all of the fins for the mint green turtles I gotta finish up the other half of the fins I need to do the tails and then I need to do all ten hot pink shells but it is December 2nd we are making great timing and I really hope by next week we can wrap it all up and I can show you guys all of the turtles that are done <laughs> okay so I'm back on I'm like physically holding my tripod so sorry about the weird angle I came on because I'm running into the issue of my magic ring not closing because the yarn is getting like too much friction and I like physically can't close it so I get this question so many times like oh what do you do if you can't close your magic ring I will show you what I personally do to get around it okay so as you can see also literally have been obsessed with this hook how gorgeous is it it's also super super nice to use it's actually a clover hook so clover hooks have been my new favorite where it's like very ergonomic it feels great to crochet with so the fact that I now have this like sparkly glittery hook it is just like it's giving me life so I'll link down below the Etsy shop that this comes from her name's Ashley and she is amazing she offers so many different customized hooks and yeah highly highly recommend like look at that sparkle look at that okay anyway 
So here is my dilemma. I have, I have my magic ring, right? And I have my two loops here that I'm trying to close. And if I tug on this strand a little, I wanna see what loop it's connected to. Okay, it's connected to this inner loop. So I need to pull this inner loop closed, but there's like some friction going on and I can't. So literally what I do when I get to this point, I used to just redo the magic ring until it was able to close, but that just got frustrating. So I'm just gonna pull the tail to close the magic ring like this. And we still have that loop that I wasn't able to pull and close, but I'm just gonna leave it. And I'm just gonna leave it because I know for this project, this is gonna be a head. So essentially, inside will be hidden with stuffing and you'll never see it. So I'm just gonna ignore the extra loop from the magic ring that I wasn't able to close and just go along my merry way and keep crocheting my head. And yeah, eventually it'll just get inside of my head and no one will ever know and then that way you can just move on with your life and not have to keep redoing your magic ring and i try and tell people this on instagram because i feel like a lot of people message me on instagram asking the same question and it is so hard to explain like with words so i'm glad i finally ran into the issue like live and i was able to quickly just show you guys hopefully it makes sense i know sometimes explaining things also is not my strong suit so let me know if that didn't make sense but i just want to do a few more rounds so i can show you guys like what i'm talking about about like it being hidden inside so even when I just got done like this next round, this is the outside of my head, looks great. And then this is the inside. And as you can see, that loop from the magic ring that we weren't able to close, it's still there, but it's just chilling inside and it's fine. And as you can see, like the center of my head, which represents the magic ring, it's, it's closed, like there's no gap. So yeah, this is just how I get around it personally. Just like when you run into that issue, pull the tail, close your magic ring and literally just ignore the other loop inside that you couldn't, you know, get closed because ultimately it's fine. Just wanted to show you guys a pan of all of the 10 turtles in the emerald color. It's really satisfying to see it finally come together. But okay, let's go sew on the fins and wrap this up. Okay guys, I'm coming on because look, we got all 10 pink shells done. So now, honestly, all I need to do is finish making two more mint green heads. 10 tails and then finally we will have all of the turtle parts to start sewing and i still need to do sewing on all of the green and blue turtles so there will be a lot of sewing in my future but i love the color combination of the pink and mint honestly it looks so good and today is december 4th so we are making great progress okay guys this is the tower of turtles that i have completed so far we have five turtles that have all of their fins sewn on and their tail. We got a nice little stack going. I'm also binging Big Brother because Netflix put on a new season. I think I'm watching, yeah, season six. I'm really excited because I really got into Big Brother earlier this year. It's a great show to watch when crocheting, so love that. And then yeah, I just have the turtle parts all scattered around my desk. Hopefully I can finish all the blue turtles tonight. And like honestly, I'm feeling ambitious, so maybe I can also start on all of the pink shells as well. But we shall see. All right, turtle check-in. The stack is super high. Tower of turtles, but we got 10 down.
Woohoo, guys! I just got done the 10 mint green turtles and we are officially all sewn up. The blue ones are done. So now all that's left is to finish up the body, stuff the body, and then add all of the heads. And where are my other heads? Oh, there are my heads. And oh my gosh, you guys, look, my Sony Angel collection has grown. I'm so mad though. I literally have only been getting really ugly ones. Like the snake, I don't even want to talk about this guy. And then I got the hippo recently. And I was like, at first I was kind of upset, but then I'm like, okay, pink squad, that's good. But then I just pulled the, um, what is this called? Chameleon. I just pulled the chameleon and I was like, oh, I don't like them. I don't like them. But hey, that is just the nature, oh my gosh, of the blind box. Good morning, friends. I came on because we are now at that stage of stuffing turtle heads, adding the eyes and adding the blush. And I just couldn't help but show you guys how adorable do all of the turtle heads look. Like they're just so cute. I went ahead and put eyes on all of the mint green heads. Now I just have to add blush and stuff them. And then, ah, and then I can proceed with finishing up all of the bodies and wrapping this whole project up. Turtle head army complete. Look at them. Oh my goodness, guys. I'm obsessed. Off camera, I also finished up two of these turtles. So they are closed up and all I have to do is attach the heads. So now I am slowly making my way through the pile and I will be closing up all of the bodies. All right, checking in with you guys because look, all of the turtle bodies have been sewn closed. I finished up all 10 of the blue turtles. So now all that is left is to sew on these gorgeous heads and attach my little leather label onto the back of the fins. And we are almost there. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the mint turtles and hopefully we can honestly wrap this up today. All right, guys, this is literally so exciting. I can't believe I have finished sewing all of the fins, closing up all of the bodies. The only thing left to do now are the heads and the leather labels. So we are in the home stretch. I honestly feel so tired though, guys. I think I'm gonna take a break for tonight and hopefully finish everything up tomorrow. And it would only be December 6th, so we're doing really great on timing. Hey guys, good news. I finished the pink turtles. Let me show you guys. Also, I hope editing Jenna can deal with this lighting because it is not it, it is not it. Turtle pyramid! Guys, literally look at the pyramid of turtles. I cannot tell you what this pyramid does for me. Like it brings me so much happiness because I can't believe I freaking did this. Like this was a labor of love. Seriously guys, I cannot wait to do the blue ones now. Guys, do you see what I see? All of the turtles are done. We did it. 
literally i can't believe it guys i i literally cannot believe it i didn't even stack them up in a pyramid because the lighting kind of sucks right now so i will be filming again tomorrow but look at all my babies oh my goodness 20 turtles Woo! we did it now all that's left is the labels good morning everybody um can you just stop and look at this i literally have a turtle army and they are taking over my desk look at all the babies oh my goodness guys i literally cannot with this let me stop and show all of the turtles literally craziness everybody thank you so much for coming along and watching all of the labor of love that went into making all of these turtles now i just have to package them all up and ship them out so gimme seaweed can get them Okay, just for fun, I did have to pick up some of the turtles and hug them because, you know, hug check. But literally, look at the babies. I am so happy to be done, guys. Like, I cannot tell you. This has literally been an experience. I've never made so many turtles in bulk before. I'm definitely really proud of myself. Let me put these turtles down and then I'll come debrief with you guys. Okay, so let's talk about some lessons learned. My strategy for making the 20 turtles was to make all of the parts up front. So I crocheted all 80 fins, all 20 tails, all 20 heads, and then all 20 shells. And then I left sewing for the very, very end. And honestly, I think that was like the most efficient way, at least for me, to do it because when it was time for sewing, it really didn't take me that long. Like when you really think about it, you're like, wow, I have to sew on like 80 fins, 20 tails, 20 heads. But in reality, it didn't really take me that long to do all of that sewing. I know also that I probably could have crocheted the fins directly into the turtle shell and like avoided all of that, but like, my turtles specifically have a certain, you know, way about them where I do sew the fins, so I didn't want to like switch it up and have the company basically not get the product that they were, you know, expecting. So that's why I ultimately decided to keep all of the sewing the same and not like crochet the fins in. But yeah, honestly, I just went into autopilot mode. I like binged a lot of Netflix. I just did not try to think about it. I like did not want to think about like the reality of the situation. I was like, you know what, if I really get hung up on the details and say like, oh my gosh, you know, 70 more fins to make, that would be very overwhelming. So you know what, yeah, I just put everything aside. I turned on a show and I just started making the fins started making the tails started making the heads and like really it was pretty fun it was like a fun experience it wasn't like soul sucking for sure like I thought maybe it would be so yeah if you have to make a bunch of things in bulk I do suggest maybe to just you know find a good show zone out and just like try and relax and get through it and then also I definitely recommend like doing it like conveyor belt style like make everything up front like all of the different pieces and then sew everything up together at the end and then another question I got on Instagram because I showed this whole saga on Instagram on my story if you guys follow me on Instagram you definitely saw like my stories of all of my progress so the most asked question was how much yarn did I use so I'm gonna pull up my premier yarns order and see how many skeins that I ordered originally because to be honest with you I don't really remember but I I have to say I don't think I used as much yarn as I was thinking I would let me see let me pull it up okay so for the regular turtles which I made 20 of I ordered eight skeins of the mint color, which is the body color, and then seven skeins of the light blue color, which is the other body color for the other turtles. So all together, I think I have... Okay, yeah, I have two skeins of each color left from the body, and I know I already had one skein of the light blue to start with, so I think in my mind I was like, okay, I need eight skeins of each of the body colors, and the fact that I have two skeins left of each body color. Sorry if this is a lot of math and it's not making sense. I'm gonna sum it up for you guys. So I basically used six skeins total for each of the body colors. So I had to make 10 light blue turtles. That took up six skeins worth. And then the 10 mint turtles, I used also six skeins for the body. And then for the shell, I really overestimated how many skeins I would need for the shell. I think I only needed two skeins for the 10 shells and I had a bunch of yarn left over. So I would say two skeins of hot pink and two skeins of 
emerald green. So all together, I only needed four skeins to do 20 turtles. So hopefully that helps. I don't know if these data points would help anybody because this definitely was like a unique situation to myself. But in case anyone needs that data, there you go. But okay, I think I'm gonna wrap up the video here. I will sew on all of the labels off camera, but thank you guys so much for coming along and following me on this journey to make all of these turtles. It was so much fun. Thank you, Gimme Seaweed, for giving me the opportunity to make all these lovely turtles for you. It was a blast and yeah, until next time everybody, I will catch you guys in my next video. Thanks for watching, bye.